Chapter 10 I was breathless from the focus and realization of my malevolent nature. Or was it benevolent? Some sort of propensity for self-defense which caused me to be violent. I was really quite dismayed, for I am not otherwise so. But the outcome confused me. The man seemed lighter, relieved. I knew of things I might do with both hands tied behind my back, read minds, telepathy, and so forth. But of what use were these abilities to me? To violate another's private thoughts was disdainful. As for my other innate abilities, telekinesis, well, I did have perfectly capable arms and legs for that sort of thing. I much preferred to fight my own battles on an even playing field. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, no weapons, no secrets. But if someone wanted an uneven playing field, I could provide counterbalance. Otherwise, I do not play that way. No interest in competition or in taking advantage of someone simply because I could. The personal code I tried to live by did not include deception and exerting hidden strengths over the less fortunate. My mom and dad, they taught me well. But turn on me, I turn back. Just after the old thief went howling away into the dawn, and before I had fully recovered from the exertion of self-preservation in the face of danger, Freddy appeared by the back of the van. I could hear him breathing. Freddy was a heavy smoker. Cools. Who knows how long he had hung menthols out to dry. But clearly, by the wheeze in his voice, one could assume he had been smoking for many decades and was probably a personal friend of the Marlboro Man himself. I turned back again to the position I had been in when I caught the thief in his misdeed and saw Freddy in the frame of the dawn with the thief's hammer in his hands. Thanks for the hardware, he said and laughed. There was a bunch of other tools strewn about, but rather than leave the hammer there, he placed it in a sprawling toolbox he had back there in the location where sometimes he fit the seat that now sat in his tool shed of a home. I said nothing. I had a bad feeling I had just been tested and was none too happy about it. He shut the gate with such strength I could feel the air rush me. Then he came around the side, got in, and dropped the keys in the ignition. There must have been another hundred keys on a ring. He smelled of tobacco and oil. I would not have struck a match anywhere near him. Who did this bastard take me for? Some retrofitted, maladjusted drama queen? I'd show him the Wicked Witch from the Northeast for his troubles. He wouldn't know what hit him. Really, who was he anyway? The jailer of a hundred different girls in a hundred different tool sheds all across this barren, concrete jungle? Probably, I thought. Probably. The old van cranked up with great force of a twice-rebuilt engine and jerked us forward into the new day. The sun would be an unpleasant surprise to my eyes.